Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. Today is a good day to be putting up a building. So we've got out here, it's supposed to rain like it sprinkled a little last night. Kind of made me nervous. Looks like a wave of rain may be coming today. I don't know. It looked thin and like not a whole lot of it. But I've got a bunch of lumber I need to get put up on this building. So today's the day we're going to be putting it up. And I am excited about getting my roof on my knife shop. So what I've got right here on this trailer, uh, we cut some pine trees off of our place. Uh, down here in the south, we have an abundance of pine trees, especially in Mississippi, really all the way through Alabama and Georgia. And so there's a lot of pine thickets. And uh, used to everybody planted pine thickets because they thought they was going to log them and, and get rich. And, and that's not the case anymore because you can't hardly give a pine tree away. Too many people got in it and bought them, fell out of the markets. And then the lumber prices are still high. So. I have got in this trailer load of lumber, I think we give close to $300. Uh, I, um, I have my friend Glenn Barker sawed this up for me. We cut down some pine trees, cut them the length, the logs the length we wanted, took them up there and he's got a sawmill. He's the one sawed up the other lumber you've seen in a previous video for us. Um, and got all of this sawed up. And then I've got a bunch of one buys over here. We're gonna use that on some wall stuff. I'm probably gonna work on my back porch some too with what's left over. Um, I'm gonna wrap the outside of this building with that old rusted tin cause that's the look I like. It'll match the front, it's just what I want. But we putting these two by sixes up for rafters on top of these trusses. Right now, my dad's over there getting a clips put on a piece of metal tubing that we're gonna weld to that uh, truss over there. And the clips will be sitting on it because they have to be dropped down further because we, we built different. And uh, then we'll put all our two by sixes on this side shed. And then we're gonna attempt to put our metal on top of there on this side shed before we do the main roof. That way the overlap and all works is easier to get screws in. Uh, next big question for some of you that may be experienced this, why am I not putting insulation up there? It's expensive. The next thing is I don't have insulation in any of that over there. So whatever I do, I've got to come in to insulate that from the bottom. I am thinking about getting the spray in insulation and spraying this roof. If not, I'm thinking about getting those boards and tacking them in from the bottom the insulation boards, I looked at Lowe's, they were like $13 for a four by eight sheet of it. It would be a lot cheaper for what I am doing. Um, and I would have a white bottom showing steel from the insulation. Probably not as good as that roll insulation, but being, if I were to put the roll insulation, I was gonna have to take all of that metal off, put the insulation down and put that metal back. So I just, I, I don't have that kind of time. Uh, I've got so much going on. I'm wanting to get my roof up here though because one thing I want to stack all of this lumber in under that, that furthest part to keep it dry so it can finish drying this lumber. It's very heavy. It is still green. What I'm putting up there will be screwed in place and it can dry up there just as well as it can stacked on the ground with slats and it'll stay straight. Um, you have to be careful how you dry it but it can dry nailed out to something as good as it can stacked up. So this will be open for a while. I'm probably not going to wall the sides up just yet. That'll be a, over the course of the winter, a little here, there project. But we're fixing to get the roof put on this today. Um, we're going to make the knife shop bigger. I, I need to spread that stuff out. My table saw and my miter saw is going to move all the way back here to the back wall then we're going to get us a big old table built to go in there to do all the leather work on mount that sewing machine that i've been sewing on the tp with in there and all the projects is going to move to be worked on in there so i'm excited about this um and i'll tell you all this i never dreamed i was going to be extending and building a knife shop here i just I had plans of building a pottery shop out here in the front yard, and this this just seems to be how things is working out, so we are rolling with it. Uh, I bought metal yesterday. I've got the metal laying over here behind me on the ground. Uh, I just bought galvaloon metal because the roof up there is already three different colors. That side shed is galvaloon, so the rest of it's going to all be galvaloon. So 
hang with us as we get all this done. I don't know how long it'll take us to completely finish it, but this video is going to be about getting the roof erected and the roof tin on today. And that'll conclude this video. So y'all hang with us. Alright y'all, I have run into a small minor difficulty, minor for me anyway. If you look along this edge right here of this roof, when you get to what I have added, it drops down just a little bit. Ain't gonna hurt a thing. 
but it's gonna drive me nuts. I'm gonna hold this camera up to where it, you might can see it. I don't know. But you have to look straight down through there to tail right up there. And I can't hold that camera real still. And like I said, it's not a huge thing, but for purposes like this, because I have not, I'm using round posts. There's no like pull a string to here. And, and I didn't have all the technical. I didn't go buy a laser level. We pulled a string on there and guesstimated, it, okay? Uh, not to mention it sat there and, and them holes has probably settled some dirt, whatever. I'm going to show you my redneck way solving this because I have not put concrete in any of these holes yet for this purpose because of the way I'm building. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about doing this. Didn't say this is technically the perfect way, but it might help some old poor country boy out there watching this. That, you know, hey, hey, I, can, I think I can do that. So that's all this is about, is helping somebody figure something out that maybe they didn't think about. And uh, so hang with me. I'm going to show you how I fix that. Now, what y'all can't see is I didn't throw this in there. I have got me a brick. Regular old brick, okay? Because that's about how much it is low. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick this up and slide the brick under the post, and I'm going to pull concrete around everything. Y'all done got it figured out now, right? May not have enough to tell you what I'm going to do. Now, right now, I have already picked this up by hand, so it is not that heavy, okay? Pick it up just a little bit more to get my brick under there. Oh, brick is under there. And yes, I could have done a better job of plumbing that before I cut the post off and all, but I was doing a lot of guesstimating. Let's look and see what it looks like. 
I don't know if y'all can tell, but I can tell you right now, it is so much better. Oh, Lord, I am so happy with that. It may not be perfect, but just me driving up, it's not, going, it's not enough to drive me absolutely nuts. So, y'all, little things like that. Because this ain't got to be perfect for me. I ain't trying to fit, you know, square stuff in there. And this got to, oh, it's going to be off a quarter inch. That, that don't matter. What drives me nuts is when I pull up and it looks like it's going, uh -uh, I can't, can't deal with that. So we do a lot of eyeballing, guesstimation, all that. But you got to know stuff like this. So when you look at it and go, uh -uh, I ain't happy with that, know how to pick it up. So just a little short tip. It ain't rocket science. Most of you already had it figured out. I know. But I bet there's three people that never thought of that. And that's who I did it for. All right, boys and girls, we got to have 17 foot and three inches. That side of the tin is going towards the building. That'll be the tail end down there. This will be up next to the wall over there. So it's the end that we're going to cut. Uh, I could have bought this the length I needed it, but I would have had to order it. I went and picked up 18 foot. 17 three. Good enough for me. Now, if you ain't got one of these clamps, just clamps on your drill. And you're gonna fool with metal, you need to invest in one. could slow down and cut it a lot more straighter but All right, for the sake of time, we're going to repeat that over and over four more times here. And then I've got the same length metal 
my top metal up there, I'm stepping on scraps. My top metal for up top is nine foot. So this 18 foot will be cut half in two and that'll go on both sides. So that's why I got all 18 foot metal. And when I get to doing that, I'll pick it back up. We're gonna finish running this side out. All right, I got the side shed done. I have got all the other metal cut. I cut it in half, which 18 foot metal, cut it nine foot, obviously. So I got four sheets propped up on this side. I can drag them up working off of this lean to with a roof already on it will be very easy to put that side on i was trying to walk down here where y'all could get a look see of course my chicken pen is gonna be jammed up now i look I, I got enough room i know somebody's probably worried i got enough room to get through there i'm slowly pulling my tomatoes out and i'll show you they're gonna come around here on the back side back here uh and that'll be where they'll live from now on because then I can drag a water hose around here and water that raised bed and this at the same time. Uh, so I'll have that and then that'll be walled up back through there against that. And hopefully I got some windows I can put in there because I need to keep as much natural light as I can. So we fixing to put yonder top on. Well, y'all, all the metal is done, but we had done had some fun. I started moving some stuff around. I moved my table back, and then I started raking over here, kind of cleaning up, because I'm going to move this table saw back over yonder. Well, I was down there picking up some stuff right here, and I seen this little wiggling thing, and it just looked moving a lot. Well, <laughs> come in. Let me show you what we found. Come here and show what we got in this bucket. What's in there, Brody? A snake. <laughs> what you want to do with him? Put him in the terrarium. In the terrarium, what'd Mama say? Not keep him, but we are going to keep him anyway. Mama said what, though? She said we're not going to keep him, but we're keeping him She anyway. said we're not going to keep him. What'd she say she was going to do if you kept him? What'd Mama say she was going to do if you, if, if you kept that snake? Shoot him. She is going to leave, what she said, wouldn't it? Mama, what are you going to do if we keep this snake? <laughs> so they got their phones out there trying to deliberate and figure out what it is. And, and y'all, I really don't know. I am not much 
of a reptile fellow. Oh, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. The pattern on the back looks like a baby rattlesnake to me. <laughs> uh, the head ain't shaped like it, but now nah, I mean it's a baby, or could be a baby, or it could be just a little brown snake. There are some small brown snakes I have found here that are in the garden, little garden snakes. I'm we we're doing some research. We're gonna look on the internet and see if we can figure out what kind of snake it is. Okay, after some research on the internet, this is Decay's brown snake. So it is not a poisonous snake, which I didn't think it was anywhere. I wouldn't have been fooling with it, but I did. It, it, it does have a pattern on his back like a little diamond or a little uh, timber rattler. But it's just a little old snake. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do with it yet. Brody is throwing a fit to put it in a terrarium, but his mama has definitely said no. <laughs> I got some lights out here, y'all. Oh, Jamie Higgison, Louisville, Mississippi, gave me some, look at these lights, show enough lights. We're going to get, I, I'm trying to figure out where I'm going to wire them up. I have got lumber we start to stack here. I'm going to put enough lumber here to work with for a little while on working on my framing. And Brody is determined to dig a hole right over here. And now he's trying to chop sticks. I just knew he was making a, a lot of racket to come on. But... We have got all the roof up. Out of all of them screws, I only missed one time somewhere right over here. And i got to get up there and put a little dab of silicone. It is finna sprinkle rain. But, y'all, we have the addition. I'm just trying to walk around and get you some more angles. See if I see a fig on my fig tree. I have been eating figs. I done about cleaned them up. I ain't going to lie. But, anyway, we have extended that much. On to the shop. Oh, a snake hole. A snake hole? And Brody's found snake holes everywhere. I'll show y'all what he's wanting to put that. Let me, let me just, come here, Brody. Show them what you want to put that snake in. Just so y'all are aware. It's this one. He, he's, see, he's got a real snake terrarium. We had lizards in it. He's, he's dying to put that snake in there. Yeah. We, we might set the thing on this little old skinning table back here where I clean fish. And stick it in there for a day or two. But his his mama his mama has strictly said no. <laughs> See, I could set it now. Now that that's out of the weather, we might could set it right up here. And, and this air conditioner drips on this table. I was thinking about doing. I got to clean all this junk. We're gonna have a major cleaning up. Bunch of that junk under there is fixing to go in the dump. I got this. I've been tripping over this shave horse, but I didn't want to do away with it because when I work on bows, I really enjoy using it. So I am fixing to bring that table saw all the way over here because I want all the saws out here. Problem is, is I ain't got power over here, so I got to get an extension cord run around over here to power everything. So knife shop is now opened up. All of this is, is I mean, this is going to be wonderful. Uh, probably these, the, that little belt grinder and that buffer is going to make its way back out here somewhere because... We want we want the working stuff around sort of the edges where the middle is somewhat open. The pot bedded stove is going to come over here and go somewhere in this middle, which means I got to move all this wood out of the rafters. So I got to find a home for it. So there's still quite a lot to be done, but we're getting there. So I just want to say, I want to show you one more thing. See, we still got a bunch of lumber. This trailer is still got a lot of wood on it bunch of tuba fours they steal tuba fours down under there they steal some more tuba sixes so we it's probably finna sprinkle rain i done got my back hurting i ain't used to all this manual labor i done got lazy sorry working up in a knife shop now y'all done ruined me but anyway thank y'all for watching spirit of the outdoors we getting it done remember the best way to do things is the way you like to do it Brody, what's the best way to do things? It's the way you like to do it. There you go. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.